Let me know right now. Hi guys, yeah, I'd like to speak in support of the referendum because I think that there's a lot of students on the campus who aren't involved in any activist um, activities at all on a day-to-day -day basis, a lot of them who are afraid of activist activities. That's fine, it's their prerogative to um, decide not to participate in direct action. I think there's plenty of us who are for direct action and just, you know, as Tom said, um, doing a referendum doesn't actually in any way directly stop us from doing these direct actions, which I'm totally on board with and I definitely want to partake in. I think that, yeah, the best campaigns are ones that try and bring everybody on board. And if you're gonna bring everybody on board with you, then you need to do that in a variety of ways and this referendum is one. It's a, legit, it's a legitimacy issue in terms of, it, even if it's not legally legitimate, it has that like, aura of legitimacy about it, which is why it will drag people into the polling booths, people who might not otherwise come and occupy an office with us, and it's fantastic to get even the most sort of, um, token message of support from those people who might not otherwise be involved. Um, I agree that obviously we need a diversity of action, but I actually think that too many speakers on both sides are counterposing this with direct action. I think that this can be part of a program of direct action because what it helps us do is build up for that huge sun in week nine. By doing this, we attract so much attention. We engage in such a rich campaign at all levels. And we say, hey, you're making the decision today Next week, it's time to enforce it. The emotional power of that concept, I think, is really substantial. The idea that we have our democracy and we are here to enforce it. So I support this motion, unsurprisingly, since I thought it up. Now, I just want to very quickly speak in, in favour of the referendum and of every other plan of action that's been endorsed. Um, a lot of people have said good things, and, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be brief. Um, there's no counter position between taking direct action, escalating our direct action, and, and organising a, a mass referendum. In fact, I think something like a referendum or meetings in each faculty or, or lots of different tactics is how we're going to escalate our direct, direct action. It's how we're going to ensure that next time we're back here with 300 students, we're back here with 400 students, we're back here with 500 students, and we're shutting down the whole administration. Yeah, I'm here again. Um, so I obviously support the referendum because I kind of brought it up before. Um, I believe the referendum is part of like, a larger strategy, as um, I'm not sure what your name is. Carl said, um, it, it's part of a momentum. It, it like, you know, brings in students who can't go rally. Maybe that student's not available on that day of rallying. What are they going to do? We need to find more creative ways of getting everyone involved. And we have to do that through a variety of means. Rallying, direct action, referendum, anything you can think of, you know, bring to the AAG. We, we don't end here. It's not just a referendum and a rally. It's more than that. We want to hear everyone, what everyone thinks we should do. Whether it's like, you know, making an effigy of Michael Spence and burning it on the quad, or whatever it is, like, let's, that you know, that's not a motion, but if anyone, I don't have to make an effigy, so if anyone does so, I'm, I'm glad to hear what it's like, I'm glad to hear about it. But yeah, I'm in support of the referendum, and I think it'll create a momentum that will, you know, bring this university to its knees. In support of us. Yeah, hi. Um, I'm not I'm not in support of the referendum and I think there's a couple of reasons why actually it's not just a question of, you know, of course we can do a referendum and we can also have direct actions at the same time and therefore it's not counterposed and we should take on all strategies. I think the thing that we have to think very, very seriously about is how do we formulate a strategy that is actually going to stop these cuts. It's not just a question of let's get as many students as possible to, you know, to put in a vote against the cuts. We've actually, we've got the referendum. We've got as much of a referendum as we need. We've had, as Freya said, you know, approximately 7,000 students voted democratically in, you know, an open ballot inside their lecture theatres. We've got, you know, more than 4,000 petitions that people have personally, you know, signed against these cuts. We've had demonstrations, we've had petitions to the Senate, we've had submissions to Fair Work, we've had, as someone said, the biggest rally on the court since the days of VSU. The idea that we need any more mandate than that, I think, can only take, actually, the argument about how we're going to stop this backwards. To actually be asking students to come and put a piece of paper in a box that says, are you for the cuts 
or you're against the cuts? How does that challenge anyone's ideas about what what strategy is actually needed to push this forward? I agree with everyone who said we need to engage the most number of students possible, and I think we've absolutely done that with you know the enormous, vibrant demonstration that we saw on campus. But the question is not how to involve the most number of students, but how to involve the most number of students on the basis of a strategy that can actually win. How do we push people to, you know, to take more actions than you know they previously would have been confident to? And that means that every single person in this room, every single person in the EAG needs to make it their personal you know, goal and collective goal. We actually have to go out and convince the student body that we can that we can win this. And that means a you know a, a clear message that we need a campaign of mass direct escalating action. We've got a very short amount of time and I think to you to have those resources diverted into putting you know a piece of paper in the box that say yes, no, we're against the cut, that 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 is over. That was five you know five weeks ago. We're well past that point. The question on students' mind now is can we really win? And I think we absolutely can win, but that means pouring all our resources into convincing people that it's totally legitimate to be doing things like sitting here, that this is the kind of thing that's actually got the administration, you know, pricking up its ears and listening to us for the first time. And that's where, you know, all of the energy of, of the activists in this room needs to be put. So I think, yeah, I'm definitely against the referendum. <laughs> Hi everyone. Um, I'd just like to uh, question the dichotomy that's been put forward that the referendum is not a form of direct action. It is a form of direct action. It's not taking state power, the state is taking the university's power uh, to hold a proper referendum. It's a stunt, it's a political action, it's propaganda by the deed. It does not detract from the program of direct action. <laughs> Hi guys, um, I just wanted to spell one of the statements that was made. Um, someone said that um, we have only a month to finish this off. This morning I talked to Michael Thompson, the acting president, to the president of the NTU about um, just what time we actually have. And in fact, no, we have two months after May 7th. We, we, we just went back before June. We still have a lot of time, and a lot of time to take a variety of strategies and tactics before then. I think that is a great idea, just in the sense that I, I've been speaking to people in the media who've actually been saying that if 3,000, 5,000 students that vote in a referendum, they clearly say, we oppose the cuts, they will run it. They will run a story, and it will embarrass the fuck out of Michael Spence. I just said myself. Well, well, just to address that, I think the thing is, like, I've been speaking to a number of staff members, members who, are, who are actually affected by the cuts. And while the union is trying to claim fair work to victory that, you know, maybe that the, there is going to be a bit more time to appeal after May the 7th, the thing is that these staff members feel that they, they've been told by the university that they have to take, you know, the redundancy or the teaching only position by May 7th. Otherwise, you know, that, that there's no deal offered by the university. So these staff members are feeling like under enormous pressure actually to take that now. That they don't actually, you know, have faith in, in pushing it on. And I think what we need to do is show that we are prepared to fight, that we are prepared to, to back them up, that we will escalate and escalate and escalate so that so that they do not take, you know, do not take those redundancies before them, so that they have confidence, you know, that the, the union will take will take um, industrial action too when, when, when the time comes 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 to it in June. So I, I think that that is very important. That, that yes, the union is saying that there's longer time, but staff aren't feeling that. Staff are feeling May, May 7th, and I know that like people who have seen the emails from, from different English philosophy lectures can, can absolutely back me up on that. I also want to address the, the thing that David just said about the media. Actually, what's going to get media attention is not students voting in it. It's not, it's not students taking a ballot. Actually, what's going to get media attention is what we just did then, what we're doing now. That's the media story that, that, that people are interested. It was, you know, it was today that we, we finally you know, got some student coverage in, in the newspaper. And I, I think people have said we've had the referendum um, already, and I think we have. Like, 
We do not need more legitimation. Actually, like the question on people's mind is, yes, the cuts suck, but can we do anything about it? I don't know. And we need to say, absolutely, we've got something to do about it. And it's not just putting a piece of paper in, in a ballot box. It's actually, you know, it's getting out there. It's disrupting the functioning of the university, just like, you know, BSU, political economy, geosciences, like biology students are doing now. That's what's going to win, you know. And, and, and that's actually where we've had positive responses on the stalls this week when we put that strategy forward. Like, the, the difference, I think, you know, this week when we talked to students that we would be occupying, if students felt positive about that. You know, students wanted to be part of it. Students could actually see that they were met, that, that we were going to do something that, that would make a difference. And that's the argument I think that we need to be taking out onto the, the student body. So, yeah, I'm, I'm opposed to the referendum. I, I, I hope that, that we vote against it. But, yeah, I'm an SRC councillor and, and I'll, whatever vote we decide, I'll, I'll vote that way in the meeting tonight. which is going to be a long campaign. Yes, we have to escalate, but this is a campaign that's going to go on past June when the NTU have industrial action ability, and it's going to go past July because, um, and August, September, October, because this university management wants to cut. And so we need a variety of tactics in this long-term campaign um, that will set, set, that set the pace for Macquarie and ANU. Um, but this is what is on the table and we should support it. As like referendums that won 67 and the No Dam, let's, um, let's build a really big referendum and win the No Cuts campaign here through, um, through mobilisations, but also this referendum coming up in week eight. reiterating a bit of what people have said, but I fully um, oppose the idea of the referendum. I think it would be extremely dishonest that for us to go out and say to students um, that, that, that that can be part of a winning campaign. People think that it, it's right, we can have a multiplicity of, uh, um, of, uh, uh, of tactics, but we've already had those tactics. We've already had the votes, as people have said. Uh, there's, no, there's no way we could get any more legitimacy than we already have. I've never seen so much legitimacy in <laughs> for four years. Um, and I just wanted to say as well that yeah, I mean, it's, it's our job as education activists to go out and convince people why the referendum can't be part of a winning strategy. Um, yeah. Okay, I just wanted to um, speak really strongly in favour of the referendum and obviously reiterate a lot of what's been said. But I think it's really obvious that we're all here united around a really common goal. We think these cuts are unjust and we want to create a really successful campaign around that. And we have to ask ourselves, what, what are really successful campaigns made up of? They made up of huge mobilisations of lots of people participating. So I think we should definitely get behind the referendum because any possible way that we can involve the greater student population, I say, is helping our outcome of stopping the cuts. That's in everyone here's best interest to achieve our goals. And I think we need to acknowledge that while this kind of militant action is great, unfortunately a lot of the people who go to Sydney University aren't as political as a lot of us here, don't go and attend rallies and sit-ins because, like it has been said, they are really intimidated by police action, and fair enough. So I think we need to still give them a voice. And I know it was said that we, we don't want to disillusion them and say the referendum is going to, you know, give us what we want. That's not what we're doing. We're not telling them that this is going to be the end. This is just one more thing that we add to this huge campaign to make it larger and larger and build in all the different actions we can. And I think we have to stop thinking that they'll come to us. We have to realise that we have to take our campaign to them and say, no, we understand it's not going to win the campaign, but it's about empowering the students. It's about raising their level of social and political conscience and making them politicised so that once they've done that, they realise that they do have a voice, that the rest of us who come and do these things are interested in them. It's not an exclusive group and they have to come down here and sit with us. We're, we're very welcome to involving everyone and we're going to go out there and talk to them and not wait for them to come to us. Because I don't think we've seen any successful campaigns where people sit in a room and just wait for people to come and speak to them. We have to go out and speak to the large university community and involve them if we really want to stop the cuts, which I think we all do. Not the students say no cuts, no way. Not tomorrow, not today, no cuts, no way. This is what the students say no cuts, no way. Not tomorrow, not today, no cuts, no way. This is what the students say no cuts, no way. Not tomorrow, not today, no cuts, no way. This is what the students say no cuts, no way. Not tomorrow, not today!